Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, from today, I'm going to start a series on MySQL and Python. So we will be seeing how we can work with MySQL and Python. Now, as we know that data can be present in a number of ways. Suppose that the data can be present in CSV files, the data can be present in Excel files, the data can be present in many many more files and the even data can be present in databases and since we know that data plays an important role for machine learning. So we will be focusing on database part of the data where we have data stored in database and in this series we will see how we can use MySQL to work with databases and retrieve the data that is stored in databases so that we can work with data in our environment. So this part of the series, in this video, we will focus on installing the MySQL in our system and then we will focus on installing a package with which we can work with MySQL and databases. So we will go through basic commands that are used in SQL and we will go through basic commands which are used for inserting the data into the database, retrieving the data from the database and we will finally see how can we store, how can we access that data in our environment and work with that data and convert that data into the pandas data frame and use all the functions available to us that the pandas give us and apply those functions methods on to that data that is stored in the database so let's start and join me on the laptop so first of all what we need to do is to go to the browser and we need to install the mysql so we need to search for mysql download in the browser and when uh, the first link that comes is mysql.com so we will go to mysql my download section and then we will go and download the mysql and we need to configure this mysql so that we can uh, create our databases and then work with the databases but these all databases will be stored locally so we need to work on these databases on a local system so let's scroll down and we will download mysql community version and from here we will go and we will say mysql community server and you will download based on your operating system say suppose i have mac operating system so i will be downloading this mac os 11 64-bit DMG archive or any other which is available for Mac. If you have any other system like there, there is Windows version and there is Ubuntu, Linux and Fedora all these are available and when we download this version we have to install it. Now as I have already installed this software onto my laptop so what you need to do is to download and is to click on this download button and follow the instructions that the uh, installer will give you and you're good to go. After installing, after completing the install of the system, of the server, what you need to do is we can download work, MySQL Workbench that is so given in this, um, in the, on this page, you can see it's MySQL Workbench. This lets us to work with the SQL and it gives us an IDE type of an interface where we can execute commands and uh, see visualize our databases tables etc so what mysql server is it is a server it, it creates a backend for your sql so that you can access the sql databases you can create the sql database and what workbench allows you to do is to write the queries and then execute those queries with sql server running on the backend now that you have downloaded the mysql workbench and mysql uh, server what you need to do is to run the mysql server now that you have installed the mysql and on mac operating system when you are installing the mac uh, the package mysql server package you will be asked to enter the password for the root user 
and you will enter the password for that your root user after you enter the password the package will be installed successfully and you will be able to see the mysql server in the settings panel and if you will go scroll down you can see that there is mysql if you and, uh, click on this mysql you can see that my mask my sql server is running so I, I will stop it i will give the password to stop it now if you want to change the password for the user what you need to do you need to initialize the another database so you will click on initialize database and you will type the password that you want to keep you want to set for your user so now you will see use use legacy password encryption because uh, with this uh, it is it's not that much strict so we will go with this because our uh, system is local and we are not uh, right now concerned about the security so we will go with legacy soft, uh, password encryption and you will click ok after you click ok your user pass password will be created and you will be able to again connect the mysql server so what you now need to do is to start mysql server so now if you are on a windows laptop you will go in start by start menu you can see their mysql server so if you you need to do same exactly start the mysql server from the windows now that we have mysql set on our system what we need to do is start the server when we will start the server it will ask for a password so we will enter our system password and it will connect to the server that is my sql server now that we have entered the password and our sql server is connected what we need to do is we can go to my sql workbench and try to see whether the connection to our server is successful or not whether we can connect to this server or not so for that purpose what we need to do we can go in the mysql workbench and if we open it so what i can do is i can create another connection so what i will say say i will say test to connection and as all keeping all other things same i will say test the connection now it will ask for the password of the user that you that you have set while initializing the database if you have changed the password second time or whatever password you have set while installing while installing the package so i will say my password and it will it says successfully made the mysql connection it means that mysql server is running properly and we are now ready to work with mysql and python so for this the basic thing what we need to do is we have to install a package that is known as mysql connector by what we will do is we will go to anaconda and we will launch the jupyter notebook you can work in any ide it's up to you and i will i prefer to work in this interactive uh, jupyter notebook because it gives me it gives us a lot of understanding about the data about the cells that we are currently executing now we will create a file a new file python 3 file and we will install that package which we have to install in order to work with mysql databases and using the python so first of all what we need to do is i will zoom it in and so first of all we need to install so we can install pip install mysql connector python in order to install the packages within the cell within the cell you need to write the command in the same way that i wrote it's a bang pip install the name of the package and since i have already installed it on my system so it on in my environment so it says requirement already satisfied and for those who have who don't have this requirement who don't have this installed it may install it may take some time to install the package now what we need to do 
is to work with this package. So how can we work with this package? First of all, we need to import We need to import mysql dot connector. We need to import it. Let's say I will import it as a connection as I will execute this cell. It gives me no error. It means that this package is all present in my environment. So first of all, we need to create a connection. When we create a connection, then we can do things on the database. Then we can do operations on the data. Then we can insert in the data. Then we can select from the data. Then we can do all other things from the data. So first of all, the first and foremost thing is to create a connection. So how can we create a connection? Simply, we can say connection, suppose, is is equal to connection dot connect and we need to pass few parameters to this connect method so how, what are the parameters that we need to pass first we need to pass the host then we need to pass the user then we need to pass the password and then we need to pass the database but since we do not have any database created we need not to pass the database name so because we need to first create the database then we can pass that database to this connection to this method and it will connect or this variable to that database so since we do not have any database created right now we need not to give the connection we need not to give the database name rather we need to create a connection then we need to create a database and after creating the database we need to close the database connection then again we need to open the same connection but this time we need to open the connection to the database so we need to give the database name that we just created and then we can perform all other queries on that database so this time we have to connect to the mysql server directly rather than connecting to the mysql server database that our database on that server so let's give the parameters that we require. So first parameter is host, which is localhost. Then we need to give the user that is root. And then we need to give the password. That is the password you, you have set. And after executing this cell, we can see that since we don't get any error so our connection was successful we can use try block and accept block for this purpose but let's keep it simple and work simply so if we want to see what is in our con object so we can say print con if we see it says as mysql connector connection so this is the way how we can connect to our database and install mysql on our system then connect the database connect to the server using the mysql python so in this video we saw how to install the mysql how to work how to import this mysql connector package into our system how to install this package and then how to connect mysql server how to connect to mysql server and what is in the con variable when we connect to the database so in next video we will see how to create tables and then how to insert data into those tables if you like this video please do share subscribe and give this video a thumbs up thank you so much have a nice day